Thursday afternoon, towards the end of my time in primary school, my teacher called me up to her desk for a chat. And she said, Ellie, how about we try something? How about from now on, on Fridays for the rest of the year, you don't raise your hand in class? <laughs> I was pretty shocked, and if you, like me, are wondering why my teacher was actively discouraging class participation, then I want you to know that she wasn't a bad teacher. And in fact, I ended up hearing this so many times, dozens of times, throughout my primary and secondary school career. You see, almost none of my teachers were prepared for the amount of questions I asked and how curious I was, and the sheer hand-up-to-hand-down ratio I maintained. You see, as well as being that annoying class know-it-all who volunteers to answer all the questions, I was also intensely curious. And my curiosity didn't stop when I got to secondary school. In fact, that's when I got really good at asking questions. I do think there is a skill to asking good questions, and in many ways, that skill is more important than having a head full of answers. Because if you're just reading what's on a sheet or just listening to what your teacher says without questioning it, then you're probably memorizing which has its merits, but it's not great for deep learning. But if you're asking questions and you're building connections in your brain based on your personal knowledge, and that leads to memorization's better looking cousin, understanding. But I wasn't just asking questions in class. I questioned everything. Do you know the whole standard progression from primary school to secondary school to college to your career, which says that you know, 13, 14, 15-year-olds aren't supposed to study college courses and they're not supposed to give talks or fly alone or start a freelancing business or do scientific research? Well, I kind of looked at it and I thought, is there any good reason for that? And as far as I could tell, there wasn't. So I went ahead and I did all of those things. And it led me into some fairly interesting situations. So I did some scientific research, some biomedical research, into trying to find a better way to diagnose brain cancer, a coglioblastoma. And I ended up presenting my research at a biomedical conference at which I was one of two people there not doing their PhD, and the other guy was doing his master's. And it was funny because people kept coming up to me and asking which university I was doing my PhD at, and every other walk of life, because I'm short, people ask if I'm 12. <laughs> and about the freelancing, like, I was good at writing, there were people willing to pay for it, and I got consistently high ratings on pieces from entrepreneurship in the Caribbean to self-published authors to the meaning of life. Somebody actually paid me to write 200 words on the meaning of life. And so what if they didn't know it wasn't an adult doing it? So I had a great time. <laughs> I had a great time, and I really have enjoyed being a curious person all my life and trying new things, but it wasn't all a bed of roses because, as it turns out, some people cannot stand people who will not just take what they're given, whether that's knowledge or opportunities or anything else. Um, so I went to a fantastic school, and I loved most of my teachers, but some people just just hated the questions, and I don't know whether that was because they thought they were disruptive. I don't really think sitting there with my hand half up is very disruptive to a class, but they might disagree. Um, maybe it was because they didn't know the answers to some of the questions, but I really admired my teachers who admitted they didn't know some of the answers, and they said, well, that's an interesting question, let's discuss it after class, or I'm not sure, but I'll give you some keywords so you can Google it later. Or maybe they just didn't want to differentiate their teaching because it's a lot easier, I understand that, to just teach one strict curriculum and not adapt for all the students' various levels of understanding. I never really understood how annoyed people would get at my questions because they weren't stupid questions. They were usually fairly advanced. And admittedly, they weren't questions about what was going to be on the exam, but they were related to the subject. And I think in a system that puts so much pressure on, us, on students and teachers to think about the exam, that people were just gobsmacked by someone who was just genuinely curious about all of it. And so, of course, there was a lot of bullying. I was a target of bullying from my first year in primary school to a couple of years ago when I stopped caring and happily became the school eccentric. And it was because I was weird and nerdy and interested and curious, and all of my questions and participation made me noticeable. And, you know, it was all the typical stuff like exclusion and rumors and eye rolls whenever I said anything and catchy remarks. And it sucks, like especially in primary school, anyone who didn't completely fit in will tell you that they probably didn't have a very good time in primary school. But I'm so happy to say that it did work out in the end and it was all worth it because I've gone from that annoying, curious kid to a confident, still curious young woman. And I've learned the real value of curiosity, which is that curiosity is the doorway to opportunity. Curious people see more. Curious people are used to spotting the gaps. Curious people know how to look under the surface. 
And because opportunity is fundamentally the gap between the way the world is and the way you have the ability to make it, and most opportunities are hidden under the surface, opportunity belongs to the curious. A lifetime of curiosity trained me to ask the right questions, and three research projects and a changed life later, I am grateful. I wondered, how can the diagnosis of glioblastoma, a type of brain cancer, be made better? And how can I use my knowledge of physics to try and improve the problem of antibiotic resistance? And with the help of my school and some great universities, I went ahead and I made some small contribution there. And I was able to do it because I knew how to ask the right questions. The thing is, the opportunities that stand up and shout, I am an opportunity, such as competitions and job openings, are actually really rare. And the opportunities below the surface are vast, and if you are trained in asking questions, you know how to find them. So this goes out to that too curious girl and anyone like her. I want to say, encourage your curiosity. Encourage the curiosity of people around you. Don't stifle it. As well as making life so much more interesting and so much more fun, it leads you to opportunity. You go from asking questions in class to asking questions about the world. Why is this the way it is? How can that be made better? And suddenly, you're changing the world. So this is what I want you to do. When you leave here today, take a look at what's around you. Are you questioning things in your life? Are you spotting the gaps? Are you making any opportunities? Are you just taking the ones that are shoved in your face? Opportunities are everywhere. But if you don't ask a few questions to lift the lid and see what's underneath the surface, you won't get them. You can laugh at those who dare to ask questions and go deeper if you want. You can be like those classroom bullies if you feel like it. But this is your choice. Laugh or act. Judge or join. Condemn or question. Stifle or soar. Thank you.